everybody stop what you're doing and run, don't walk to your nearest bookstore. The newest Dork Diaries just dropped. We haven't had a new one since October of 2019. I'm saying this like I've been foaming at the mouth desperately waiting for Rachel to release this banger which I have. So this book came out on September 26th. If you're new here, I started doing this thing where I've been recapping the Dork Diary series. So go check that out if you're curious because you'll be lost if you don't, you know, because of the complexity of the plot. Anyway, so I went to Barnes and Noble the day it was released, snatched that shit up. And when I went to check out, the girl at the register was on the move. And I was confused because I was like, where's sis going? Then she whips out this bitch. Look at this, it's a Dork Diaries keychain. Apparently, I don't I don't know if it's like if you bought the book that day or that week, you get a complimentary keychain. I don't really know what the deal is, but then she was like, wow, I remember when like the ice skating book of the series came out back in the day when I was in elementary school and it was like such a big deal. I feel so old now. Keep in mind, we were most definitely <laughs> around the same age. I wonder what she was thinking because I went in there at 11 a.m. to buy this shit on opening day. I was probably the first and only one because I saw the keychain jar it was filled to the brim. But it is my sworn duty to update the masses about anything and everything I've talked about on this channel. Miraculous, ever after high, monster high, I am tied to these bitches for life. Anyways, let's get into it. So Nikki's band was the opener for a very popular band called The Bad Boys. Think of like One Direction level, okay? But that tour ended early because Nikki convinced them to take a break because they were burnt out and on the verge of splitting up. So Nikki's life is back to normal at the moment, which she describes in her own words as excruciatingly boring. Girl, you were the opener for a national tour. You had your own reality TV show. You win every single fucking competition you enter. Every guy likes you. Every popular, cool, cute guy, at least. And you have the audacity to say that your life is boring? Shut the fuck up. So to make up for the fact that they're no longer on tour anymore, um, the band decided to perform at this local summer fun fest. When Nikki slipped and fell on an open water bottle, which naturally caused mass destruction of the stage. And then to make matters worse, Mackenzie recorded the whole thing and posted it online for everybody to see. This sent Nikki into a full on depression spiral because she thought that the whole world was laughing at her. So she ghosted everyone she knew and threw out her one of a kind custom made dress that she wore on tour in the trash. But her friends eventually cheered her up and this gave her the idea to do this savage summer challenge. Her words, not mine. Basically, they all agreed to try one exciting and challenging activity that they've always wanted to do but were too scared to try. Nikki's goal was to learn fashion illustration. Then Nikki got this call from Trevor Chase, who is this big time producer that hooked their band up with the bad boys in the first place. He told Nikki that he's giving their band an all expenses paid vacation, paid trip to Paris to do this photo shoot for the cover of this really popular French magazine in place of the bad boys because they are, you know, taking a break right now. And this is a personal thank you to Nikki for um, helping the bad boys not split up for good. Then she was like, oh my goodness, a trip to France? I need to brush up on my French. She wants to know how to say, where's the bathroom? May I order a croissant? Can you tell me where the miraculous ladybug girl lives? Dude. What does this world come to? Nikki needs to find a way to make sure all of her friends are available for this trip without actually telling them about the trip because it's confidential at the moment. So she does some social media stalking and comes to the realization that none of her friends seem to be available because they're partaking in the savage summer challenge, which was in fact her idea. To make matters worse, Chloe and Zoe secretly signed Nikki up for this art camp as a surprise and thank you for, you know, thinking of the savage summer challenge, which Nikki was super ungrateful for, by the way. I get that Nikki wanted to keep her schedule open for the trip, but goddamn, Sis was saying that her life was a bucket of puke because of this surprise. But here's the thing, Trevor Chase calls Nikki up again and says that the trip is officially confirmed, which means she can now tell the rest of her bandmates. And here's the thing, they need to leave for Paris in four days. So Nikki tells everyone that they need to cancel their savage summer plans because they're heading to Paris. Victoria Steele 
Steele and Mackenzie Hollister are coming on this trip as well. And in addition, they will be meeting an assistant social media intern when they get to Paris. Can you guess who that might be? You're gonna piss your pants in shock when you find out. Before the trip, Mackenzie asks Nikki to meet up and during this meeting, she tells her she wants a spot on the cover because it'll help her become the newest bad boys member. And basically blackmails Nikki by saying that if she doesn't comply, she'll send Trevor Chase the really embarrassing video that she took of Nikki and the band at the local summer fun fest. So Nikki was like, I'll think about it to pacify her. Then when Chloe and Zoe came over to help Nikki pack for Paris, they were like, um, Nikki, where is your one of a kind, super expensive diva dress? You know, the one that you wore on tour because that's the outfit that they're going to be wearing for the photo shoot. And Nikki was like, y'all, this is so embarrassing, but in a moment of weakness, I did in fact throw it in the trash. They were like, no biggie, we'll just fetch it from the can. Unfortunately, at that very moment, the garbage truck came and went, taking the dress with it, most likely to the dump. Then it was time for Nikki and the gang to head to the airport. However, upon arriving at the airport, Nikki realized that Brianna had switched out all of her clothes with this Princess Sugar Plum backpack and a teddy bear named Hans. She contemplated throwing the backpack and Hans out multiple times, even attempted to once, but a late uh, then returned said backpack to her. The whole ordeal almost made Nikki miss her flight entirely, but luckily right before the doors were about to officially close, she just snuck in. But because she was late, Mackenzie stole her first class seat next to Brandon and Nikki had to sit in coach. She was the only one. It was um, not a fun time for her. So they arrived in Paris, got to stay at this bougie ass hotel. Chloe, Zoe, and Nikki were able to share a suite and Nikki had a view of the Eiffel Tower from her bedroom window. And then, get this, her mom calls her up and tells her that she can buy a whole new wardrobe using her debit card at this really like new chic place called Mon Amour. So Nikki's really slaying the day. She got to see a lot of sights like the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre. She even got chased out of a cafe by accidentally telling the barista to smell her feet in French. Then Brandon asked Nikki on an ice cream date, but Mackenzie and Victoria Steele crashed the date in order to introduce them to the assistant social media intern. And guess who that person is? Mr. Andre, who would have thought? Brandon was super jealous. He didn't want anything to do with the man. Then the next morning, Nikki runs into Andre and he offers to pick up and drop off the clothes that she ordered from Mon Amour. So Nikki goes up to her room to wait when Brandon comes a knock in and invites her on a second date because their first one kind of got spoiled. He wants to go see these famous fountains and he even brought her a box of chocolates and a mug that says, I love Paris. However, shortly thereafter, guess who also comes a knock in on Nikki's door? Mr. Andre with all of her clothes that are beautifully gift wrapped and they're saying Mon Amour left and right. Brandon was absolutely flabbergasted and naturally they got into a fight where Brandon was all like, dude, her name's not Nicole. And Andre was like, actually it is bro. Brandon started avoiding Nikki from that point on. Then Mackenzie and Nikki were sent to run an errand and while they were doing this, they saw this really big line and Mackenzie naturally assumed it was for a pop-up boutique. So they got in line, walked down these stairs, and found themselves in the middle of the catacombs with the remains of over six million people. Mackenzie was freaking out. They ended up running out of there, but after that endeavor, Mackenzie actually hugged Nikki and said, I know we're frenemies, but thank you for saving my life. You're a really nice person. Pretty extreme character development there, but slay. Then it was finally time for the photo shoot, but the problem was Nikki still doesn't have her dress, so they end up searching searching and searching and eventually found this really awesome knockoff, but when they went to the store to get it, they were 90 euros short. That's when Mackenzie comes waltzing in and offers to, you know, pay for the dress thinking it was for Chloe and then Zoe, not for Nikki though. I guess we haven't gotten that far into her character development. But anyway, so now Mackenzie is nice all of a sudden. She's saving the day, but when they get back to the hotel and the dress is delivered there, she starts having second thoughts. She starts thinking, hey, I need an outfit for the photo shoot because I'm probably going to be on the cover. So then she decides not to give the dress back to Chloe and Zoe. Everybody starts pulling on it and then it rips in half. Mackenzie snatches up all the 
remains of the fabric, runs off with it. Nikki, you know, has nothing now. She's devastated and tells everybody that she won't be able to make it to the photo shoot. She turns to Hans in her time of need, gives the bear a hug, and it's at that moment that she finds, stuffed deep down in the Princess Sugar Plum backpack, her outfit that Brianna had packed all along after taking it out of the trash. So Nikki ran out of the hotel, ran into Chloe and Zoe who decided to stay behind because they wanted to be there for Nikki. The three of them found the scooter, scootered on over to the location of the photo shoot, and made it just in time. The pics were a success, Mackenzie was not able to make it onto the cover, and on the plane ride back home, Brandon and Nikki were able to sit next to each other in first class and clear the air. Brandon was all like, I hope you had a fun time with your boyfriend, Andre. And Nikki was like, what are you talking about, you silly, silly boy? He was like, well, he was getting you all these presents and y'all were calling each other mon amour and since I am fluent in French, I do in fact know what that means. And she was like, Brandon, that's the name of the store and these were clothes that he was delivering for me, not, he didn't buy me them. So he apologized and said that he would promise to try and get along better with Andre in the future and everybody lived happily ever after. I'm pretty sure that in the first Dork Diaries book, Nikki's entries started out in September, which would mean that for the past 14 years, we have officially covered one whole year of Nikki's life. Hallelujah. This is book 15 of the series. There is probably going to be a book 16, and I will probably be here to let y'all know about it. Thank y'all so much for coming with me on this journey, and I'll see you next time. Bye!